Yo, what's going on YouTube? It's D. Lloyd. So Clay Thompson has made his decision. He is going to pass on the Los Angeles Lakers. And instead, he will be signing a three-year, $50 million contract with the Dallas Mavericks. And the way he is getting there is via sign and trade, which we pretty much expected. This is definitely a big blow for the Lakers. But we will talk about them and how their situation is affected momentarily first we have to talk about clay thompson and his fit with the dallas mavericks in my opinion now immediately you add clay thompson to a team that just went to the nba finals you would have to assume this makes them the favorites in the western conference i don't quite think that is the case but this does dramatically improve the dallas mavericks now for dallas i think in the nba finals they were definitely exposed um i i think everybody sat back and witnessed that the way they play in the regular season with Luka being so ball dominant and holding the ball, that is going to be a problem come playoff time. And it ended up being a problem come playoff time. I think the offense is going to have to evolve. They're going to have to change. But you add Klay Thompson to that. That immediately gets you a jump start on changing that offense. You now have three guys you have to worry about. I'm assuming Derek Lively will be a starter next season. You have one heck of a roster. And I think the floor spacing with Klay Thompson there is going to make things easier for Luka. It's going to make things easier for Kyrie that want to get into the lane, that want that floor spacing. They will constantly have that with Klay Thompson on the courts. They're going to be dangerous to stop. Now, defensively, Klay Thompson isn't what he used to be, but he's still a solid defender. I think even there, he will help out a lot. I just think in the Western Conference is going to be so tough. And I think if other teams would have gotten to him instead, you know, of the the, um, the Minnesota Timberwolves, they may not have made it to the NBA Finals. That's the only reservation I have. But for sure, this is one of the top teams in the Western Conference. They're going to be great, especially offensively. As long as Jason Kidd draws up the right schemes, gives the proper spacing, Luka doesn't hold on to the ball as much as he did in the past. He can still do it, of course. That's what makes him great. But not as much. I think they will be great. And I think they will be a top team in the Western Conference. But we have to talk about what does this mean for the Lakers? Of course, my favorite squad, bro. LeBron James said he will take less to try to get in a star or a meaningful player. Um, early, his list was James Harden who re-signed with the Clippers, Valley Kunis, who signed with the Wizards, and Klay Thompson, who now signed with the Mavericks. So they were 0 for 3 on that front. Now we're hearing DeMar DeRozan is a player that he will potentially take less to sign. Getting DeMar DeRozan will either be a one-year full mid-level session, $12.9 million, or a sign and trade will be worked out with Chicago. We have her reports that he will be leaving Chicago. He is not trying to stay in Chicago. DeMar DeRozan almost signed with the Lakers back in 2022, so much so that he said in, in his podcast with JJ Reddick or JJ Reddick's podcast that he thought he was going to be a Laker. He took a trip to Mexico, and the while there, Kyle Lowry, his old teammate, texted him saying, Yo, Lakers just traded for Westbrook. What's going on? And that's when he went into scramble mode because he just assumed he was going to be a Laker. This is now another opportunity for the L.A. kid, the guy who grew up, went to Compton High School, could potentially go back to L.A. And I think he is down for it. But it's kind of weird because when you survey the landscape of Lakers fans, of course, they are not the GMs, but you still get a feel for what the team and the fans want. It seems like people aren't in love with the idea of getting DeMar DeRozan. Now, where do I sit? when it comes to that situation now i would love to have demar Derozan. i don't think he is the greatest of fits in the world right he of course is going to clog up the paint a little bit he's not going to help you with the ideal floor spacing but to me demar Derozan, he's going to be able to get a bucket i think he's a little bit better than westbrook westbrook was just struggling to even get buckets as a laker i think he won't have that issue he will still get you 18 to 20 points a game in my opinion at the very minimum 16 17 points a game he knows how to score and i think he will be able to do that still with the lakers but where things get even better is when lebron james takes a little break or anthony davis takes a little break you have a guy in the martyr rosen that could play with that second unit and he can 
be the main guy. And I'm not saying him he come off the bench, he can start, and then obviously you stagger the minutes. But DeMar DeRozan, then in that situation, is a great fit. Because now you have a Dalton Connect coming off the bench that can shoot, right? If you get some other shooters off the bench as well, that creates that floor spacing for DeMar DeRozan to do his thing when LeBron James is not on the court. Then, of course, the one that had to figure it out, J.J. Reddick will have to figure out that spacing <laughs> um, if they're all on the court at the same time. Who do you put out there with them? You would assume Reeves will be out there with them for right now, D'Lo, but we don't know how long D'Lo is going to stay with the Lakers, right? You would assume they're trying to trade him. You're hearing the Nets could potentially be interested in them because of the expiring contract, but I don't think there's a big market for D'Angelo Russell at this point. That's why he opted into the deal, which causes the other issue. And I think this is the main thing that a lot of people aren't really talking about when it comes to Rob Pelinka and where he missed. Because, yes, you missed on Clay Thompson, but ultimately, at the end of the day, Clay Thompson, you know, he's going to have to make his own decision, right? So even though you want a player to come, the player is going to have to make his own decision. But where I do give some blame on Rob Palinka is you look at the contract that has been signed over the past few summers, they all have options. And I think this is where the options catch up with you. Because you look at the roster, they have to get rid of players. They have a full roster, but why is that? Because all the players that they signed and they missed on all opted into their deal. Because why wouldn't you? Cam Reddish, you know, he accepted his his option jackson hayes he accepted his option why would you opt out you have a salary guaranteed gig right here i would opt in too if i went to a team didn't play well and now you know it's between testing free agency seeing if i could even get a job probably at the same price or just taking a job staying in la and seeing if i can have a better season so that puts the lakers in a tough spot the the maxi deal Made it obviously where they had to then trade D'Lo, but that was going to be a case anyway with him opting in. So uh, I'm indifferent about that. Like I said, I know some people are very, very high on Max Christie. I'm lukewarm on Max Christie. I think he's a solid player. I just don't know how much of a difference maker he is. Hopefully I am wrong on that front. So I think those are the situations that made things difficult for the Lakers, this free agency. And now it's either really DeMar DeRozan Go make the trade for Jeremy Grant or LeBron James is going to ask for the max. And that's what I believe three years, 168 million, somewhere in that range. And I'm not mad at LeBron for requesting that neither. If they strike out and just don't get nobody, just pay me and, you know, we're right off into the sunset. Or I'm going to give you this discount and you better put together a potential, you know, championship contending team. And those were the options. And it looks like the Lakers are pretty much striking out at this moment but be patient i think they're martyr rosen if they want him and they want to go in that direction and lebron james thinks he is a player worth taking a pay cut for i think that is a guy you could for sure get but if you get DeMar martyr rosen you have to make another trade and i think that is what will offset and make the DeMar martyr rosen signing a great one if you get the right pieces around them and what is that what Lakers fans have been begging for for years, shooting. You got to space the floor, especially in today's NBA. So we'll see what happens. Lakers still got to get a big man. But Klay Thompson going to the Mavericks, depending on the play style, if it was last year's Mavericks team playing the way they played last year, I don't like the fit with uh, Klay Thompson there. I thought it would have been better in LA. But which I'm, what I'm assuming is going to happen, they're going to switch things up. And if that's the case, you get proper spacing. You have now Clay Thompson shooting. You have Luka passing the ball more and that's sticking in his hands. You get some ball movement, things that the Mavericks definitely lacked last season. Then I think it's a great move because you free up that whole middle of the paint for Clay. I'm uh, not for Clay, for Kyrie and for Luka. So we'll see what happens. You guys let me know. Did you like the Clay Thompson signing. Where do you think the Lakers go next? Let me know how you guys feel about it in the comment section below. As usual, hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, please do me a favor. Go ahead, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. And subscribe if you haven't already. It's D-Lord. I'm going to see you all next time. Peace.